When we go to the polls come February 2019, there is no doubt that we'll have more young people submitting themselves for elective office thanks to the Not Too Young to Run bill passed. My name is Isabella Akinshaye and welcome to Political Politica. Political Politica with Isabella Akinshe. You're still tuned in to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinshe. Let's meet our guest today. He is a graduate of political science from the University of Lagos. His work experience includes a stint as a business executive officer with Mozambique Enterprise, a transport logistics firm, and administrative officer and policy researcher at Youth Party. He was also awarded most supportive student in his faculty by the Social Science Student Association 2013-2014 academic session. He was the Public Relations Officer, National Union of Lagos State Students, University of Lagos Chapter. In 2017, he volunteered as a mobilization officer for the Youth Alliance for Good Governance, coordinating voters' registration and awareness campaign in Alimosho local government area. He is Babajide Balogu. Jide, welcome to Political Politica. Thank you very much, Isabella. So today we'll be discussing student politics. That's our topic of the day. What made you get involved in student politics? Basically, um, I've been into politics even before my um, participation in the University of Lagos. I was opportunity to serve under my father. As, my father was um, the CDA chairman. I served under him while I did the um, distribution of um, agendas all around the street. Um, while I got into the University of Lagos, I Right from my year one, I had the opportunity to serve under the current faculty president of then, 2013-2014 um, administration. At the end of the day, I got an award, um, most supportive student of the year, 2013-2014 administration. Um, going along, I was opportune to serve the people of um, National Union of Lagos State Student also. I was a PR, and that administration, I would say, or the people said, was one of the best because we were able to bring um, the freshers into the association easily because that was the major thing the association was lacking. It was lacking continuity. So you say your father, yes. the role your father played in politics influenced your decision to yes. go into student yeah, politics? Yes, always been a public servant. I hear you. I hear all the positive things you're saying. But my question is, has corruption eaten into student politics? I feel um, Corruption has eaten deep into student politics, and to a large extent, what I've what I noticed while I was personal uh, PRO for Political Science Association um, Southwest Region was that it's the laziness of some students of or of some leaders in the association that has led to the fact that some people would take what is meant for the people, they would take it into their pocket, and nobody is asking the question. That is the angle I feel corruption is allowed to come in. It's not that corruption is coming. Corruption is allowed to come in. That is my own perception about it. So I feel it's the lack of participation of certain leaders that is allowing um, people to siphon what belongs to the people. So what learnings have you taken from being a student politician and how are you applying them now? Um, the major thing I've learned is how to deal with my fellow colleagues, because I feel the, like um, Professor Jega said, he said, while he was a professor in, in university, he thought the toughest thing was to deal with students. While going outside, he saw that dealing with politicians is more difficult. So the first step, uh, the first thing I've learned is, I've understood how to deal with students in, in a university, and a school like University of Luxor, I tell you, I've experienced the depth of um, struggles. So my point is, I've learned how to manage students. I've learned how to cater for the welfareism of students. So I feel it is going to be much easier for me to like cater for the needs of my people in my community. And my final question will be, how much does the theory of political science match up with the practical? The greatest opportunity I've had in my life is studying political science. 
I will say it again, the greatest opportunity I've had in my life is studying political science. Because one thing I've noticed about leaders or the current leaders we have is they don't have the experience of politics. They don't, they, they've not learned about politics. It is one thing to be a leader naturally. It is one thing to go through the process of learning political science. You need to understand the theories. You need to learn how to apply these theories. You need to read histories of how people have applied the theories and know how you want to manage them. The fact that I studied political science has given me an edge more than every other candidate. I'm so will you say the theory matches up with the practical? It is the best, yes. Thank you, Jide. You're welcome. We want to hear from you. Go online and use the hashtag PoliticalPolitica and make your contributions. What are your views on student politics? Tweet at PP with Isabella and follow Political Politica on Instagram and Facebook. We'll be going on a quick break, but when we return, it's our politics and more segment. Stay with us. You're still tuned in to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinshaye. Before the break, we discussed student politics. Now, on our Politics and More segment, we'll find out about Jide's journey into politics. I know you already alluded to it. You spoke about serving under your father. But what led you to becoming a politician? Like I said before, I've been into politics from the day one of my life. From the day one, even as a baby? Um, yes. Because my father has always been a public servant, so either was, he has left when he's meant to sit down at home and take care of me. So I myself, I feel I've participated in public servant one way or the other. So my point is, it has been an innate ability to serve the people. It was it last year or two years ago, we led um, a peaceful protest in um, Alimosho, local government area, concerning a light issue. The light was very bad then. It was an epileptic power supply. It was like a toy to these um, power supply people. They were just owning and offing it. So we led the peaceful protest to this extent, and at the end of it, we got a better result. So be serving the people, participating in politics, has always been an innate ability to it. So you mentioned your father. Who are the other people you look up to politically? Do you have any godfathers, any leaders you draw inspiration from? I don't have any godfather, but what I know I have is a role model, which is Nelson Mandela, because of his selfless attitude to the people. He has been a selfless leader to the people of South Africa. What about in Nigeria? In Nigeria, I wouldn't say I've seen any um, selfless servant in Nigeria. And the likes of someone I would have said is a public, is a selfless servant. I would go with the likes of um, Bola Ike, Antonio Nahoro, Wale Shoinka. Those are my picks when it comes to You're that. a student of political science. What political ideologies do you subscribe to? Basically, I subscribe to a welfare state, a state that caters for the people more. Talk about um, social housing, talk about basic... Um, healthcare for the people and quality education for the people. So these are things I subscribe to. So you consider yourself a leftist? Yes, a central leftist, yes. Do you believe that these political ideologies are embodied by your party, the youth party? I've gone through um, parties manifesto and I won't lie to you, the first political party I've seen as an ideology is youth party. The ideology is basically, when you're talking about an ideology, they are going with a welfare state. That's the party, yes. Now, there's been a lot of noise on social media, hashtag not too young to run. People are saying young people should go out to run. But then when the old leaders present themselves for public service, everybody's excited. Do you feel that the not too young to run was movement was very effective? Yes, it's very effective. On a larger note, um, I feel it's not just not too young to run. We are looking at not too young to perform. We need um, young people who can perform, not just to run. It is one thing to run. Leaders have been running, they are just running. We are looking at performance. Can young people perform? Yes, they can perform. They have the fresh ideas, they have innovative ideas. They've seen, they've felt the pain. For example, I lived in Alimosho all my life, like 25 years, I'm 25 years old, all my life has been in Alimosho. I know the pains the people feel. I know the pains the people feel. I, f I feel the pain with them. I have experienced the pain with them. So what we are looking at here is we need to save our people from the hands of people who are claiming they are running or they are elderly people. That is why we should allow them to be here because they serve one man. The man is giving them the opportunity to be in this seat. That's what we are looking at. But now we are looking at 
young people who have felt the pain, who wants to rescue their people from this problem. So a young person gets into power, but the old people don't allow this young person performs. Then what happens? I don't understand the context you are coming from when you say the old people won't allow them to perform. The Who old are the people, people are not the controller now? of the state. The people are in control of the state. The old people are just in... Be, the older politicians. Yes, the older politicians, I mean. They are just there because they've not had the um, challenge. They've not had the real challenge. Because what we've been seeing is the PDP and the APC and... But they have the experience. I believe um, leadership is not just about experience. It's about um, performance. It's about um, how you care for your people. What the people need. Are you there when you need them? Because government, I believe government is meant to like cater for the people. Like give the people what they need. Talk about healthcare centers. Talk about schools. Talk about roads talk about infrastructures in the society. These are things government is meant to do for the people. I'd like to talk about the things you want to do for the people on our project Lagos segment. But my final question on this segment will have to do with your age. You mentioned you're 25 years old. Do you feel your age is an advantage or a disadvantage for you? I feel my selling point is not even about age, but I feel it's just, an opportunity. It's just a privilege for people to know, yes, a young person is ready to serve the people. So I feel age is not the major thing I'm using to campaign. It's my will to serve the people that I'm looking at. It's not just my age. But have you had people say you're too young to run? Why don't you get some experience? Maybe come back in your 30s? I, I'm a grassroots mobilizer. I'm a grassroots person. And one thing I've noticed, even the elderly people, people at the ages of 70, 65, they are willing and ready to support a young person because they know the things we some will even tell you we know we've spoiled the past for you people, but we allow you people to go and take charge and refresh everything that has been spoiled. Thank you, Jide. You're welcome. We'll be going on a quick breather on political politica, but when we return, it's our Project Lagos segment where Jide will be sharing his big plans for his constituency. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinshe. Now it's time for our Project Lagos segment. So, Jide, you mentioned you've lived all your life in Alimosho. Yes. So, how would you rate the past 25 years or 20 years in Alimosho? The past 25 years in Alimosho for me has been a terrible one. Because um, I, first of all, lived at um, Ipaja. I lived at... Um, Command, that's Agbado, um, that's Agbado Ward. I lived at Ayobo also. I'm currently living at Ayobo now. And I will tell you, it has been terrible. Public schools are bad. Health care centers are terrible. There's an health center close to my house, and I will tell you the bushes around it, they've, they've gotten to the roof of the health center. You can't even enter because you'll be scared of so many animals like that. So my point is, um, my last 25 years, my last 20 years in Alimoshu has been very, very bad. And I'm very sure that is why you see the people rallying out now to say, yes, we are done. We are tired of what is happening in Alimoshu. They are tired of what's happening in Alimoshu. So how are you engaging them on a daily basis? How are you finding out what they need, what they want, and really getting their support? Because it's one thing to rally around you, then on election day, they get money and they withdraw their support. Like um, Bob Marley said, if I'm right, um, he said, um, you can enslave the body, but you can't enslave the soul. It is wanting to buy somebody with money, but you've not gotten the person's heart. A few people will actually vote with their brain come, in, come 2019. So if you give them the money on the day of election, it is wanting for them to go to the polling booth. Nobody is seeing them. They can vote for whoever they choose to vote for. So I believe people are going to vote with their brain. Come, let them waste their money. I'm telling people know what they want this time around. They are done. They are tired. We live in abject poverty in Alimosho. Um, if rain should fall now, I tell you, you can't drive into places like Ayobo, Shasha Akonwajo, that's Bameke Road. You can't drive into Agbado Kyodo, Pleasure. The roads are very bad. You need to park your car somewhere, take your shoes off, and start walking inside water home. There's a school called um, Community High School in Bameke Road, close to Bameke Road. If rain should fall, pupils, small kids, they will take their bag off, put it on their head, their sandals on their head, they start walking inside water. 
down to go home. There are a myriad of problems in your constituency. So what are your solutions? What are you bringing to the table? What are you promising your constituents? The position I'm going for is not an executive position. I'm going for a legislative position. But you are representing them. So you're saying their voice is going to be heard. You're going to go to the Lagos State House That is why if you hear my statement, I've always made the word we. It is we, the people of Ali Mosho. We are going to speak for the people of Ali Mosho. We are going to critically check the budgets, what they are allocating to Ali Mosho. Those who they've given um, contracts to come and work, we are going to make sure we are seeing what they are doing. If they don't do it, we will. We stand there and check. We, we, are, we are activists. We, the people of we are tired. All we want is solutions right now. We are going to the house to advocate for what the people need first. So you are checking the budget. You are advocating for what the people want. So what are these solutions? What do the people want? First of all, we need good primary health care centers. The health care centers in Alimosho constituency. We only have 16 primary health care centers in Alimosho constituency. Alimosho is the largest local government in Lagos State. We have over 2.5 million people there. And I'm telling you, we only have 16 primary health care centers in Alimosho Constitution. And I'm telling you about six to seven of them are terrible that, can be, that someone can't use. So we are going there to apply, to, to, to talk about, to advocate for primary health care centers. We are going there to uh, advocate for more public schools. We are going there to advocate for more roads, because our roads are bad. These are three major things we are going there to look out for. My final question will be, how do you see the Lagos State House of Assembly playing a role in the development of Lagos? Lagos State House of Assembly is meant to like check the executive arm. They are meant to make laws for the executive arm. I feel they own um, the large part of um, the decision making. So we need to do our job as legislators. We need to do our jobs as legislators to make everything work out. So we need to check the executive arms very well so they can like um, serve the people the way they should serve the people. Thank you, Jide. You're welcome. We'll be switching things up on our light-hearted segment, the quick fire segment coming up after this break. Stay close. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinche. Now it's time for our light-hearted segment, the quick fire segment. Jide, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. So number one, the first female governor will emerge in the next elections. True or false? False. Number two, the party that will dominate in 2019 is? Youth Party. Number three, young people have what it takes to become leaders because? They've experienced the pain of the society. Number four, the funniest thing I've read about myself online. I do have one. Number five, the candidate I am most afraid of. None. Number six, Nigerians will vote with their stomach or their brain. Their brain. Number seven, if not you, who? Me. Thank you, Jide. You're We're almost wrapping up this episode of Political Politica, but first we'll check out what's happening on the political landscape. Enjoy. Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinche. Now it's time for our final words segment as we wrap up the show. So final words is an opportunity for you to have your final words. Imagine you're taking your last breath and you have the ears and the eyes of Nigerians all over the world. What will you tell them? Can you say that to your camera? First of all, I would tell the Nigerian people um, they should not be scared to vote a young person and it's not just about not too young to run, it's about young, not too young to perform. The young people are out there seeking for your vote and you know we are young and we are here to serve the people of Nigeria. And I would encourage Nigerians to please vote with their brains and not with their stomach. Thank you Jide for being on Political Politica. You're welcome. Isabel. Not too young to run, not too young to perform, as Jide said. Like we say on this show, politics is not just for the old, it's for the young, it's for everyone. I'm Isabella Akinshaya, reminding you to play your part and stay woke. <laughs>